Hello everyone, I'm Mike Anderson from Collision Advice and this is my great friend Danny Gredenberg from the DEG. And we are so excited to be working with SCRS to bring you a brand new series of quick tips to help you to boost your business. Hello everybody, welcome to today's tip. You know, recently I was at a shop in Chicago and at the shop they had actually replaced a rear body panel on a hybrid vehicle. And the vehicle started and ran perfectly fine when they pulled into the paint booth. But when they went to pull it out of the paint booth, the vehicle would not start. Now I happened to be there and they were like, Mike, do you have any idea what might be causing this? And I reached out to uh, Jake Rodenroth and Jake said, Mike, look in the back of the vehicle to see if there's a, a plug that might have come unplugged. And during the masking process of masking the vehicle in the interior, somehow this little connector had gotten bumped and it had disconnected it. So ladies and gentlemen, as we start to see, you know, the advancement of EV, you know, electric vehicles in our industry, there's a lot of things we're going to have to start thinking about. So what I did was again, you know, anytime I don't know something, I'm going to reach out to somebody that does. And this guy right here, Jeff from iCar is an absolute genius when it comes to electric vehicles. And so what we started talking about was about connectors. And Jeff started talking to me about the importance about, you know, many of us think about like when we disconnect an AC line, we want to protect the AC line, you know, so it doesn't get contaminated. And we do the same thing with wiring harnesses. But what about electric vehicles? So Jeff, talk to me about the importance of protecting these connectors. So as we take a look at the electric vehicles that are out there, the amount of energy that is available in the high voltage batteries that propel these vehicles is tremendous. And what it comes down to is the cables and the connectors that connect the battery to the inverter unit and then the inverter unit to the actual drive motor itself. These connectors have to have extremely low resistance. Now, some of you all may be familiar with resistance values and maybe you work with low voltage systems and perhaps some of you work with some of these high voltage systems as well. So whenever we start looking at high voltage systems in particular, milliamps, that's thousands of ohms, become very, very critical, especially whenever we start looking at high current applications. So as we look at a high current application, and I'm going to use just a round figure of 300 amps on, I want to say, a moderate acceleration on one of the higher performance uh, uh, EVs that's out there. And some of these EVs can spike uh, 500, 600 amps on a single drive motor at certain points in time on a hard acceleration. So I'm just going to use a nice round number of 300 amps. So 300 amp draw through the terminal connector right here, through the cable. That connection right there becomes, I'm going to say, a weak point if we're not careful. So that connector brand new probably has less than a thousandth of an ohm of resistance whenever it's brand new and it goes into service. And as long as it's protected and clean, and let's face it, these connectors aren't taken apart and put back together very often, but once in a while they do need to come off. Uh, it's very, very critical because at a thousandth of an ohm, 300 amps turns into a 90 watt light bulb, if you will. Right. Right there at that connector. So think about the old style light bulbs where a 90, my 90 watt light bulb got pretty hot, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's okay, that's accepted. That, the engineers take this into account. Now let's take and make believe we get maybe a little bit of dust in there, a little bit of contamination in there. And let's take that from one milliohm to 10 milliohms. That 90 watt light bulb just turned into a 900 watt light bulb. So you start to look at the way that number starts to scale up. Let's make believe we get a little bit of paint over spray or something else in there. And that resistance goes up to 0.1 ohms. What did that just turn it into? A 9,000 watt heater. Wow. And if that were to reach one ohm of resistance, it would be a 90,000 watt heater. So, so just so. so I can understand this. So as an estimator or as a technician, what we need to think about is during the repair process, if we're going to have to disconnect any type of connector that's involved in this electrical system, that we need to make sure we protect not just the, um, I guess we'd say the male or the female end of the plug, right? Because if any dust um, contamination gets in there, it's going to create an issue. Is that correct? Absolutely. We need to protect these connections no differently. We protect uh, airbag type connections and any of our connections on our electronic systems. This is extremely critical, especially in our environment where we've got the dust and sometimes grinding yeah, debris particles, and things yeah. of that nature. And Now, and, let me uh, ask you a question. What, what's like a best practice? Now, I see right here, you have this nice little cap that yep. just amazingly fits this. Over here, you've got some tape. You talked to me earlier that some people use baggies. Like, is there a recommended preferred practice for how we should so um, protect these? My, my, my thought process on this is, is if the vehicle maker has dummy plugs designed for the sure. purpose, they should be the ones that you first default to. 
is the dummy plugs. In some cases, vehicle makers may actually state that you can use that or make sure you mask it, tape it very, very well. I like to use some sort of a non-conductive, highly visible tape. If I'm going to do it, I'll make sure I cover now, it up really well. the key there you said was non-conductive, highly right. visible. Yep. Non-conductive, highly visible tape. Okay, go ahead. And, and depending on your situation, perhaps uh, a baggie over it and zip tying it off or something. Again, ensuring that nothing can get in there to, to contaminate that connector. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, remember, whenever we have to disconnect any type of component, such as these examples Jeff has shared with us, and we have to protect them, that is going to be a not included operation. And again, how can we verify that? We can always go to www.degweb.org. Jeff, thanks for joining us today, and we hope you got value out of this tip. Make it a great day. If you find these tips helpful, please subscribe, like, and share, and comment below for any future suggestions. Thank you for watching.